After me never know say them type of disaster here, me and they come here come face. After me never know. The person whom you're trying to reach is currently unavailable. Please leave a message after the Alright, cool. On a serious thing, let's get into this. I'm quite disappointed to the way how this trip has turned out. And it was never intended for it to be like this. As in, like, this trip was supposed to be a wholesome move. I was hoping that this was going to be a journey of healing for me. Do you understand what I'm saying? And it's so sad that it didn't come out to that. Now, guys, listen, watch this video to the end, right? Because I need you guys to fully understand everything. And this is going to be the last video that I'm going to do speaking about my parents. After today, I want this chapter to be closed. I don't want to have to come back, revisit this. Like, I am done after today. As in, we are finished, finito. There's nothing more. This is the end of this chapter. And going forward, I want after this video for us to look to positive things and that is it and i'm just ready to move on from this like now it's time to it's just done do you get me so yeah make sure you guys watch this video to the end like comment and subscribe my name is jay edwards and let's get straight into this video lord i just pray that you just let this video just be cool calm and let me just get everything out all right so where i last left off i was being evicted from my house and knew that i was making preparations to leave right and obviously a video after that i was showing the preparations the barrels and stuff like that um the fact that i did radio training and stuff like that media training making sure that i was ready for whatever opportunities was to come my way when i arrived here so obviously during that moving process guys i had my plan and i just want to start like this right i had my plan the moment that i decided i was moving to jamaica matter of fact this whole move to jamaica that i was doing i had spoken about going to jamaica with my team from the year before and jamaica was a crafted plan into this year but it was never supposed to be a move it was just to be a trip but when i got evicted i was like you know what i can actually pack up a move here it's going to be financially easier for me here and stuff like that and my business can still grow i can still do what i need to do right if you guys don't know what my video my business is it's j radio go check it out in my previous video i probably explained what it is and I left receipts in there so if you guys are genuinely inquisitive about what I do please go watch that video cool so I had my plan in what in terms of what, what in what I wanted to do and the plan was to obviously rent somewhere to live and obviously just start building from there and obviously I'll still have my ways of making my money from the UK and stuff like that and just expand myself out here and grow cool so that was the plan and I was moving with that. I was trying to find somewhere to live, but you know, it's very hard to do that from another country. And also sometimes landlords might take time. Real estate agents, they take forever in Jamaica. They're so slack with their time and I'm so sorry. But yeah, I was finding through and I was getting through a couple of places. I found one, but because I had moved my date back, right? They ended up giving the place to somebody else because somebody was there, like literally in Jamaica with all the requirements and stuff. And I had to delay my flight a week because I was waiting for my birth certificate, which I now have, right? Just stick with the story story now people because it's a lot to cover through yeah cool so moving back i lost that place i was like cool let me find somewhere to live now leading up to me going i had found somewhere guys yeah so when i was missing my first flight i had found somewhere to live already it was just for me to sign the tenancy agreement and stuff like that now leading up to my first flight that i was supposed to take right I was doing this journey by myself, I was packing my brows, I was moving and I remembered that I was saying to myself I wanted to make sure that I see all my siblings before I left like I wanted to make sure I said bye to everybody because at the end of the day this journey that I'm going on is not just for me and like I wouldn't feel good just disappearing from their lives so from my brothers to my sisters, even on my dad's side I went to go see to say goodbye now when I went to go see my sisters, right I went inside of the house and I only went to see them because I already had agreed in my head that me and my relationship with my mum is not going to work out and I'm happy to do this on my own and from last year September you guys saw that I wasn't making content so at the end of the day you know it's not like there was any problems and stuff she was living her life I was living my life the only thing I wanted to do was come and say bye to my siblings and that be it so I came in the house and I just remember like obviously I had posted the video at the time and she's like oh so you're moving to Jamaica and she started asking me a load of questions now in my mind like I didn't want to disclose anything to her because at the end of the day I knew how unreliable my family is in terms of like just you know not exposing my plans to the enemy in terms of just how the previous track records of what she's done that trust wasn't there so I was just wasn't I was being reluctant to tell her the information all they needed to know was that I was just leaving and that was it but um you know I can't lie like she the way how she was asked like she she said that she heard that I was going and stuff like that. 
and whatever, whatever. And she was just like kind of because she was just asking a whole bunch of questions and question whether I should be going or not. I remember in my in my mind, guys, like I had already made up my mind. I already knew what I was doing. I already prayed about it. I know I'm supposed to be here. Do you go? Know I mean, and it was just a whole lot of combative of whether you should be doing this or not. So instead of me getting upset, I explained why. I'm making my move and I even said watch the video if you don't know and I have to do this like there's not like you're telling me that I shouldn't be going to Jamaica I think I should it's a perfect opportunity for me to build it sunny outside I haven't stopped smiling since I've come here do you know what I mean so I knew that within me that was the right decision to make but anyways um, for the first time in my life I felt like I heard genuine concern in my mother's voice in terms of fear that I was gonna be okay and obviously the fact that I was being evicted, like she was just creating one bag of excitement and stuff like that. But to me, it looked like she was being genuine as in like she was asking me if I'm going to be OK. And she was making a bag of promises like, oh, like, um, you know, I don't know. I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed because it's like i didn't ask for anybody for their help to anything or anything like that and i didn't even explain what has happened but i'm just getting cool so when she was questioning me about certain things right i felt like i genuinely heard concern in my mother's voice for the first time and the inner child in me was like okay give her a chance and because my mom you know she's aware of god and I believe that God has done certain works within her and you know she sh sometimes she shows signs that she might have changed and all of that type of stuff or she's changed so I kind of like look for those glimmers of hope within her and just kind of see but we also had a conversation after that expectations and whatever maybe I shouldn't expect cool I shouldn't expect but then it's like don't expect anything from me then you know if you can't be a parent I can't be a child. Cool. You can't expect me to expect you to be perfect. You can't expect me to be perfect. But yeah. During that time and that conversation, she was just questioning my moves and what I was gonna do. And I felt like I heard genuine concern in my mother's voice. And I trusted that. I let her a bit into my plans and what I wanted to do. And she insisted that she wanted to help. So whatever that hope was i didn't ask for it but it just seemed as if and my main thing was to pray and i always gather my siblings to pray my brother was there as well and we held hands together and we prayed because i always do that with my siblings that especially my sisters hold hands and we pray that god cover us on our endeavors on what we're about to do and where we're about to go and that the generational curse is stop with us always pray and I was just hoping that that was some sort of breakthrough because I do see times where my mum chips in and out of like wanting to, not wanting to and it's like I know there's deep down within there there's some type of that's why I always just kind of look out but now I know I shouldn't do that and yeah I let her in with my plans and she seemed as if she was being genuine and leading up to that obviously yeah leading up to me leaving and missing my flight she was trying she looked as if she was trying to assist me right and I was about to sign a tenancy agreement to come into this place, but I was just making sure that, not into this place, but um, a place that I had found, right? And because I had found it, I didn't find it through a real estate agent, I found it through Jamaica Classified. And obviously, I've contacted the landlord, I've asked for online viewing, they sent me through the videos and stuff like that. And like obviously it's my first time renting from abroad in it, so I didn't know that I would have to pay my deposit before I landed. So I called my mum and I asked the question, "Oh, like is this? Because it sounds a bit dodgy, you know how they're asking for one month, like that's way for money to send. Wouldn't they like could I not pay them on arrival when they hand over the keys or something? Or whatever?" She's like, "No, that's how it's supposed to work or whatever." I was like, "All right, cool." But she was like, "Also, you can't trust these people, or whatever, whatever." And she called somebody else on the phone. And she called somebody else on the phone and I told them the location and them two advised me. Not, it was in Kingston as well, you know. I still would have been central to everything. And them two advised me not to do that. And my mom said that she knew somebody else where I could stay. And she was also encouraging me to contact my father, right? 
I didn't want to contact my dad because I hadn't spe spoken to my dad since 2018 when I was homeless, right? And the last time I saw my dad was 2009. And I said to my mom that I don't think mentally that I'll be able to handle that because me and you are just getting back on good terms. Me and you just are repairing things. I wouldn't want to now go into that situation with my dad and then like, you know, be vulnerable in a way where I'm depending on him for somewhere to live and anything happens because I don't know how, how I might react. And you see the level of control that I'm able to have with you when speaking to you. That was only done through hard work reflection and therapy i don't know if i can extend that same kind of courtesy and that same type of control towards him because at the end of the day you have to remember it's man and man so she was like oh um i understand that and i thought the con and from there the conversation left from him and then we ha i had arranged that i was going to stay by somebody that she knew whilst ex like money was going to drop in my account a couple of days after so the plan was just for me to stay by them to the end of the week but she said i could stay as long as i wanted just to the end of the week or whatever so the, so the option was this remember i had my place yeah i was about to move into it i was about to pay my one month rent on deposit but they encouraged me not to so i was like all right cool that like i'm going now now that the friends there's an option i can wait out the week get extra money and still find somewhere better to live type of thing look somewhere rent somewhere whilst i'm down there cool that was the plan so the friend got on the phone everything was cool these plans are ready set to go now when i missed the flight yeah I remember I didn't feel prepared at that time anyways because there was stuff left over the house and stuff like that and I just felt like it felt a bit rushed leading up to like I didn't get any sleep the bowels were sent off the night before um, yeah like everything just felt a bit rushed and I remember my friend said delayed not denied but my mom was trying to say to me oh no I don't think you should be going that's a sign because remember the whole time my mom's been encouraging me not to move to Jamaica and I was like to my mom I can't financially do it over here again like I, you guys know the story if you guys really want to know why I made the decision to leave look at my previous video like I can't financially do it over here again and listen if I go to Jamaica rent's half the this this that and the next in it so yeah having to do the bagger explaining explaining it was draining and it's like i'm fighting with somebody over a decision i've already decided to make it doesn't make sense moving on from that i missed the flight everyone was trying to make it seem as if i shouldn't be going and i shouldn't be here and i'm starting to doubt myself and i questioned god for a minute whether i should be doing this stupidly and yeah like um i was able to rebook the flight straight away because when the BA people them told me I couldn't go and they gave me a card I'm going to call the people them and they rebook me back my flight and I tell you guys <laughs> like leading up to the flight it was problems like my mom was behaving like she was helping like basically somebody was on the phone and she was like oh okay I'm going to help you some way some form so she was like oh she's going to get me I remember I didn't ask her for these things I didn't ask her for her help but she's like, oh, she's going to get a digital SIM card and she's going to put credit on the SIM card and she's going to have somebody pick me up from the airport and somebody's going to show me about and somebody's going to help me look for places. Now, all of these things that she said that she was going to do, remember, I didn't ask her for no help. Yeah, but never ask you. And you said that you was doing it because you wanted to step up to be a mum. You didn't come through with one thing and the moment and one thing that was a red flag for me that i realized that you was just coming with a bag of empty chat was that you said to me that someone told you what was going on on the media and from the moment that you said that to me i was like in my head oh it's that you only do things when people say when i was homeless at the age of 18 yeah before that somebody at the church was trying to find me somewhere to live with a social worker and you look at the social worker and tell the social worker to the church was finding out what was going on you look at the social worker and say no i want to work on a relationship with him so everyone could go away yeah and true everybody saw yeah that i was going through this whole eviction thing another time and people are looking at you like oh where is where what, what's going on with your son you come as if you was gonna come and help me with a bag of empty chat and didn't come through with one thing like i beg you nothing but never call your phone and i swear like i'm tired of like extending grace to my parents because it's like it's hard to just maintain respect for people that keep disrespecting you to your face like when my whole like come on let's talk truth man my whole journey on social media yeah hasn't been me disrespecting my parents i my story has been i've been homeless at the age of 18 and because of that i've gone through depression anxiety and stuff like that you lots cannot make it seem as if i can't talk about my own journey you lots can't make it seem as if because i'm so much positive has come from this as in the people that have inspired, people that have messaged, the prayer, the, 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 
you lot know I've been able to build a community with this. And if it wasn't for this, when my parents turned that, when my when you guys turned your back on me, who would I have had? You lot have to bring me down because of the social media thing, yeah. And I know I'm chipping off, but I'm not gonna. I'm gonna post a video just like this because I need to let it out just like this, yeah. When you lot turned your back on me, who was I supposed to have? Who? Who? You lot are complaining about social media, how I put my life out there on the internet. It's my life because I'll ooh, now I haven't dig up in you guys' dirty laundry. Oh, now I haven't exposed you guys for the lifestyle that you guys are really living. It's just me. And if you don't like the way how you sound in my story, it's because of what you did was messed up. But I can't continue to extend respect for you guys as my parent and take behind the scenes beating from you guys and expect me to remain silent. No, that makes me a victim. I'm no longer a victim. That The victim days are done. I'm sorry. If you guys are still looking for me to be a victim, then victim days are done. No victim around here. Because the last I remember, like, 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 you know... I felt like me and my mom was having conversations, decent conversations, right? I didn't ask you to interrupt in my business and interfere. I only was responsible for my siblings. I only cared about them because this journey that I'm going on, I realized that my parents aren't capable. So those that know better, do better. So that's why I work so hard on myself and say to myself. Because I know I've got work that needs to be done and what I'm doing, I need to build for all of us. I can't be selfish them ways. And I will not be still, I couldn't have endured homelessness three times, being raped, molested and all of these different type of things, losing how much, how much these jobs, jobs like I'm cursed, yeah, and still stand up today if I was still doing this journey for myself because I would have committed suicide a long time ago and I did try that and it didn't work, you get me? This journey isn't just for me, it's for others, my siblings, because I deem that you guys are not capable and family really does mean nothing to you guys, but it means everything to me. I pick and choose my family and they're still kids. So I don't want them to go through the same separation again. That's why I'm in load up with more time and talk. Because Uno can't tell if you feel like Uno can't beat me. Uno can't beat me. You get me? Yeah? No. No, this is not the small, small little picnic. Them days they're done. You get me? You're done. Cool. Back to it. Sorry, I have to let it out because I've been holding this in for time. For time, for time, for time. I'm still respectful. Uno, I don't list them. I don't call them out their name. And I really should. Because they're out of umpteen something Uno call me. Anyways, flight miss it all help that she said that she was going to give me because it's time for it to be put in action drop out you get me i don't know how you guys expected me to have my life sorted at the age of 22 when i've been homeless three times and the first time you made me homeless how the hell can you expect me to rush and be prepared with life when you got me off to a bad start it would be different if i was inside of the house yeah and i was 22 living at home you guys could expect me to have it together but you put me off to a bad start in life and Una kick me along the way and expect me to still be prepared. Wicked no blood. Not. Wicked. Wicked. Wicked, wicked set of people. Wicked, 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 wicked. Because you're looking at us. <laughs> Y'all can't see that I'm building. And when a, when a man's building, you want to put them down about their hustle when your hustle is no better than mine. Okay, leading up to the flight, sorry, I know I keep going off, the flight, the missed flight, rebooked flight, in between the rebooked flight and the date of me going, I was using that as time to prepare and send off the rest of the stuff because I look around in my house and I realise, yo, you know what, I genuinely wasn't ready because there was a couple of stuff that was left behind that I needed to take, purchase one more barrel, packed one more barrel of the extra stuff and I put my extra suitcase in there and I sent the barrels off. This time I was more prepared. I was like, cool. Me know some I got catch the girl yard there for a week. Cool. Money I got drop in. That the date there. Cool. Boom round. Rent. Done. In my own space. Fine. My mom's like, oh no. I don't want you to go there no more. You need to go to your dad. I was like, oh man. I don't want to speak to my dad. I really don't want to speak. Me and you just got back good. Can we not just work on what we're going on here? What we got going on here? Why you got to include him? Like, can you just slow your roll? Like, I just, when I make me catch whiplash, remember I just got evicted. I've, I'm moving countries. I'm having to find somewhere to live. We just rekindled our friendship and our relationship and our mother's relationship or whatever it was. And we just got back good. How, how the hell are you trying to add the man in there when I haven't spoken to the man how much years and we still know the man is disrespectful? You get me? I said I don't want to speak to him. Cool. But I said, you're my father. 
let me hear her out. But I said to her, I don't want to speak to him, period. Like straight up, I was like, I don't want to talk to him. I don't. I don't think it's good, not right now. If I go, I even said to her, I was open to it. If I get to Jamaica and I'm in my own space and I'm calm, then maybe I can go around him and work on our relationship. But I don't think it's wise that I go to Jamaica and the first thing I do is go and live with him. That wouldn't make sense. Remember, I'm my own big man. I don't want there to be any any problems. I warned her of this. The same way I'm saying it to you guys. Make my mom come out and talk and tell me and tell me say if I lie me and tell. Cool. Move on. She was like, oh, no, I don't want you to go around people. I think it's dangerous and this is that. But I'm like, you're the same person that suggested this person to me and I know them too and you know them as well. Why would you not want me to go there? Like, it's just like you're messing up. Like, when I think I have my plans together and I just made plans, I remember we were doing this together. Like, you've told me not to rent my place. You've told me that, like, we've agreed that I'm going to here. So I base my plans around here. You're now telling me now I can't go. You want me to go somewhere? Like, why are you doing that? You're like, already you're moving me around and around. Like, you, that was already making me feel insecure about my placement because I already had somewhere. Anyways, she now tells me she doesn't want to go there and then like I'm now having to find alternatives. She's now rushing me to call my dad. I'm like, yeah, all right, cool. If you really like, you're going to speak to him then. So we call him and immediately on the freeway call, the guy was being hostile. I'm like, mom, I can't do this. I said, I can't do this. You see the same level of restraint that I can have for you? Like, I don't know if I can still have that with him. And respect goes both ways. I'm an adult at the same time and I can't take disrespect. So if I see that the conversation is going to go a certain way, then please, let's just end it there and move on. Bro, cool. I hung up the phone, left the conversation from there. My dad calls back. My mom does the talking. My dad's like, yeah, come. Like, basically, actually during that conversation... I was able to, I said to him, first things first, respect has to go always. You're going to respect my mum, I'm going to respect you, you respect me, respect goes always, yeah? If we see that this is going to go somewhere and, you know, arguments going to form and stuff like that, it's better we just go our separate ways. I don't want to fuss, you know, I don't want to fight and I don't want the argument, I don't want none of that. You get me? Don't want none of that. Just, just leave all of that. If we're not going to see, if we see that this is going left, we can just left it alone. You get me? I just leave it. I'm like, yeah, cool, whatever, whatever. So he asked me, what do I plan to come to Jamaica to do? I explained to him my plans and he's like, oh yeah, I'm not going to lie. I need help with this, this, that and that too. You get me? I was like, cool. I said, my business needs is definitely what they need down here. So yes, something, and this is the plan. And I told him the plan and he was like, all right, cool. If you want to come, like, no. So my mum spoke to him and then I explained to him what my business plans were because he asked me he was like okay cool let me hear from him now what is it your plans that you were like want to do so I explained to him what I want to do with my business and, ray, ray, ray. and he was like yeah cool well you can come stay with me I can show you about you got a car like got a car you can move about this is that and he has his um, business down there ray, ray, ray. so I was like cool say nothing I, like I told him that you was going to be kind of like a last resort type thing I'm still trying to find somewhere to live so if I don't find anywhere in the meantime because remember I had my place that I was going to rent but they were saying that because it was up in Stony Hill and it's not advisable to live in Stony Hill because of traffic or rare area I was told but it still would have been Kingston closer than the country that I would have been in anyways yeah um, but yeah anyways I took their advice didn't take it so I'm having to I was looking for somewhere else a bit closer more central area, area. cool upon taking people advice so I let him know that he would have been the last resort when I saw that he got closer to the time my mom still didn't want me to go to the place I called back my dad and I was like, do you know what? In a child in me, maybe it would be good. I was taking, I was kind of praying about it. Everything in me felt bad about it anyways. But because my mom was encouraging me to, and I was trusting my mom, like, guys, look at that. Like, I, I don't know how to explain it. It's like the inner child in me was kind of like, oh, I just got my mom back. Okay, maybe my dad could be cool too. He doesn't seem as bad. He was like pretty much inviting on the phone. So cool, let me trust it. Let me try my luck. So yeah, anyways, he comes, he said that he was going to pick me up from the airport and stuff like that. He was calling me, everything seemed good, everything seemed calm. And then I ended up going to my dad. And I'm not going to lie, guys, the plane ride was nice. Like, I'm not going to lie, the plane ride was like, I got, up, I got to go up in first class and everything like that. They treated me nice. And when I got to the airport, like... The people that carried my luggage for me, they treated me real good. I'm not going to lie to you. That was the best. And I didn't pay. They gave me four suitcases. For, I, I, bro, they gave me four suitcases free. I don't know. That journey, that plane ride journey was just everything, bro. I can't lie. And then, yeah, when I landed, my dad was there. And it was good vibes. Do you get me? And we spoke. And we was leveling. And everything seemed cool, calm. He was. He looks a lot like me. Um, we're a lot like mentally wise. But 
I feel like he's just a negative manifestation of me. As in like, you know when in the movies when you got a bad and good version of yourself, yeah? I feel like that's he's the road that I would have taken if I chose to go the negative route way. Did you get me? So it's like a literally a manifestation of the path I could have taken if I didn't choose to stay with God, type thing. So I'm just like an understanding type of thing. But yeah, like we had a conversation and it was kind of like a heart to heart and he let me know that, you know, he's like willing to learn and this is that. He was showing me signs of like just being a good person, you get me? And yeah, like I'll go around his shop and he's asking me for advice and help and I'm like I remember I've come to Jamaica with my plans, isn't it? And I put off what I was supposed to do to kind of just help him out because I didn't just want to come, stay with him and then bounce and go on the road, didn't it? So I was like making sure I spent some time with him and kind of like, yeah, he was calling everyone around to the shop and saying, oh, my firstborn child just came and this is that. And everyone knows me from social media. And he was gloating to people how I'm on social media and people recognize me and rare, rare, rare. And everything was actually cool to begin with. The first two days anyways. The second day, a situation happened. And <laughs> it's like my mom pretending like she I don't know. I go up to the shop with my dad and obviously he shows me he showed me around and stuff like that and obviously like I said before people are coming up there and he's all cool and he's all calm. And I just remember saying to my parents, like, remember, I'm an adult too. Like, at the end of the day, like, yeah, you guys are my parents, but respect goes where respect comes, isn't it? So just speak to me with respect. I'll speak back with you. Like, I'll speak to you with respect. Like, if you respect my position as a child, I respect my, like, I respect your position as a parent. The moment that you stop treating me as a child, <laughs> I stop seeing you as a parent. Do you get me? Fair is fair. Because you can't keep putting a child in adult like situations and expect them to behave like kids it doesn't make sense so i remember i was speaking to my dad's girlfriend and she was like remember this was two days in and i needed to get a sim card and stuff like that because the flow one that i had wasn't working well so she was having conversation about going to the town with me to get a digital sim card and then she goes to sit down next to my dad whilst the conversation is still going on and then he cuts me off and he tells me to shoot go away so then I turn around and I look at him and I'm like, like, excuse me, what did you say? Shoo, go away. And I was like, sorry? He was like, move. And I was like, who are you speaking to like that? And he was like, move from this look like, move from this look white type thing. And I was like, dad, I don't like the way how you just spoke to me. And this, sir, like, I was speaking to him through the stock shelves. So after the three times I asked him, like, who, like, who are you speaking to? Are you speaking to me, huh? Type thing to verify my madness. Before I get upset, I have to verify my madness. You get me? Because I'm thinking like you telling to shoe, like go and move front. Like I'm a big man at the end of the day. Like you, see, like am I a cat? Am I a dog? Like even the girlfriend looked confused because she said that he couldn't talk to her like that. So if you're gonna talk to the girlfriend like that, why are you talking to me as a big man like that? That is a child. Anyways, cool. So I walk round and the guy starts to puff up in chest. I'm taller than him, you know. So he puffs up in chest and starts getting. So then there's some people, me get dark. Me get dark. Because if this man feels like he can get dark, I can get, I can get darker earth. You get me? So from this one, me said one piece of wire go down in the shop. But I was like, you're my dad. I don't want to hurt you. Come here one new, say you're sick. So I never want to thump you. Uh, so I lick you down uh, uh, I hear some you commit murder. So that's why we never touch you. And that's why I looked at you and I said, you're my dad. You get me? I don't want to hurt you. But anyways, people, we never did free you, know. I'm in a fear. I don't fear no man. There's no way I could be homeless three times, go through so much things, me defending for myself and fear no man on this planet but God. What's he mad? I've been through it, bro. So this guy goes for the butcher knife. And this is outside of his shop and everyone's there watching. I never caused none of this, so I knew I was right. So if I die today, <laughs> I am justified because I didn't cause this I didn't disrespect him and I respected him as a father and I still didn't put my hands on him and he went for a knife and he held the knife right here to my throat and I looked at him dead in his eyes like this yeah and I said do it take my life if you're bad take my life I wasn't scared I mean it like dead in his eyes do it do it because at the end of the day 
I know I've done the best that I can in my life. And I'm on the right journey. And I know if I die today, I died following my dreams. I, di I died believing in myself, in the pursuit of happiness. So that's why when I looked at you in your eyes and said, do it, I meant it, I wasn't scared. And you saw that I didn't fear you or that knife that you had in your hand. When I told my mum what was going on, she tried to project it and make it seem as if I was a problem. Remember, you're a little pitney. Remember this, this, that. And I'm like, little pitney? You guys keep classifying me as this little child. A little child that's been homeless three times, paying his owner bills for two years, managing electric gas and all of these things. I didn't know that's a little child. I didn't know a little child can do these things. I didn't know a little child could have employees working with people. Guys, I might not be the richest, but this is not little child things. Because how do you expect me to be a little child when I haven't had parents for the past couple of years? Little child couldn't come into play. Better you call me a ranking big man then. But you can't call me a little child. I might be younger than you, yes, but you can't say, oh, just because you're my mother, that means I am a child. That doesn't make sense. Because when you wasn't a mother, have I had not had to grow up and take on adult-like responsibilities? And it's funny how you lots love to call me big man when you're ready, but look a child when it's convenient for you. Big man when you don't want to accept your responsibilities as a parent, but child when you want to control me. Wanna load that note? I tried to leave from around my dad the first time, but it was his girlfriend. When that night thing happened, I tried to leave from around there, but his girlfriend convinced me to stay. And he came and he was saying how he was apologising and he and I, and saying that he doesn't want me to go and stuff like that. So that's why I stayed because I thought he was going to change. He asked for me not to leave. And he did, they were even voice note. She has a voice note in his phone if she ever wants to come forward and tell the truth. Oh, me not telling for going on. Yeah, all right, all right, all right, all right. We just avoid each other. So, I remember I'm coming to do my work. I've worked with Dream Weekend since I've been there. Whilst this whole chaos is going on between me and my dad, I'm still having to pursue work and do work with Dream Weekend and stuff because that was one thing that I wasn't going to delay. I came here, I met my artist, yeah. I did actually meet my artist, guys, yeah. I had a meeting with my artist and everything. So, yeah, all of that whilst the chaos was going on, I've been able to manage my business because my business and personal don't mix. So, yeah. The girlfriend convinced me to stay. That's the only reason why I was still around. And that's the, that's the only reason why everything blew up like this. Because I listened. And I just... It shows. Guys, I'm 22. I'm still learning. You get me? So give me grace. I have no one advising me. I have no one telling me what to do. I'm learning off my own back. So I thought I could trust my dad. Evidently not. You get me? I can't expect him to be better than what he's willing to learn. And what he's like... Not everyone's emotionally intelligent. So I get, again, I can't look at it and blame him. But I'm just not going to take disrespect from nobody. Especially if I know that you're not capable within your own self and you don't have that same level of how can I take advice from somebody? Is that like going to somebody to ask them for advice on how to build a house and they've never laid a brick? If you're not awake, how can I force you to be awake? How can I stop and I, If you're not in the jurisdiction of God as well, how can I stop and take instruction from you? You're going to lead me astray. Cool. So, I might not be perfect, but I know well enough if that I'm not good for people, I stay away. Understand? Cool. The only reason why I stayed is because of his girlfriend, and I took advice, and she pushed, and I took advice, as I always do. Just kind of relying and hoping that people have my best intentions, because remember, I've been doing it on my own, so I was hoping that some form of community would have just came. I don't know. You know when you're tired? And you don't know. Because you thought that it would work out with your dad. It's my parent. That's the only person I should have been given a chance for it to work out with. You know? He was the last person to give a chance, actually. So, seeing that my mum filmed me, my dad was kind of like all I had. And I was hoping that was going to work. Didn't work. I came and I found out so much about my dad that I didn't want to find out, actually. I'm quite disappointed in the person that he is and the stuff that I've had to find out. Things I can't even disclose to you guys, but because I was finding out about the lifestyle, <laughs> he didn't want me to find out about it. And my dad put me out the house for the baby and the girl that he has, that he has in there. Same kind of situation what my mom did for her and her man and the baby that was on the way. It's the same thing that I came and re incurred here. And it partly made me feel like I was cursed because what is this history repeating itself? My mum held a knife <laughs> on me. 
my dad did the same thing when, when I was being kicked out of my mom's house a man was involved in play she was pregnant with a baby I come here kicked out of my dad's house the baby mother and the baby in there in a house they could be me, not even one year old. And I came and found out about the sibling when I landed in Jamaica. I didn't even know that I had a sister down there. So there was a lot that I was discovering, a lot of that was that was just going on and I just <laughs> I didn't have time to even put my head down or even get into work. I've just been dealing with stuff back to back. And my dad's bad ways. Guys, you gotta understand as well, like this guy isn't just like this with me, he's like this with everyone. With all my siblings, with every girlfriend that he's had. He even treats, I'm sorry, I'm going to talk, but he treats the girlfriends, pick me away. And I don't like that. Because at the end of the day, I know what it's like to be a kid and be in a house and feel vulnerable and not welcome and watching a guy do stupid things to the mum. I'm feeling defenceless as a kid wanting to protect my mum. But Trey is not my dad and I don't know the man. And the man aggressive can't do nothing. Stay there as a kid, vulnerable, can't say anything. Mm. Anyways, my dad kicks me out. I'm hitching up with the girlfriend. She said that she's leaving him because she doesn't like the lifestyle. And a lot of truths has been coming out since I've been arriving anyways. So it's like she's had a moment of revelation saying that she's been going through this with him for years and she's not staying with him or whatever. That's the only reason why I stayed with her. Because I'd like until like Wednesday gone to um, find somewhere to live because her peoples were coming back. So she gave me till last week Wednesday to find somewhere to live. Which, to God be the glory, I did. But yeah, on the last day, my dad knew I was at the house. He has his own place. He comes round the night before. I locked the room door. Remember, she told me to share them I left. No, no man me seeing in the bed morning. Somebody just walked past and wanted me head straight. Like, see, I'm lying here and dead. But no man knows me in there. She tell him. So it's even a man come and f come for a big problem. But remember that morning down that he was there, I'm supposed to leave same day. So I had to leave. So her room is one part, the bathroom's on the other part, and my room is behind her room. So I've locked the room door so he can't come in and I can't come out. So in the morning I have to walk through her room to go through the exit, because the exit's through the bathroom. So I walk past, I'm all my head straight, I'm going around the back and I'm making my phone calls. I called my mum because I was running out of options. I had viewings, I was supposed to, but at the end of the day, I had an emergency option, Airbnb. So I called my mum just to inform her of what was going on and the things that my dad was doing and whatever, because things didn't end off so bad. So I was kind of hoping that maybe she would assist, not financially, but my mum has houses. My mum's in the country as well. She get me, so she wanted to come and see me and save me, she could have. Just simple things, or even just give me advice on what to do, or even pray for me. Just something as a parent, you know? Something. Hello, you led me here. Your advice brought me here. So, or just let me know what I'm doing if I'm on my own. You know? And I figure it out. She run me off the phone after I told her the lifestyle. After I told her the lifestyle that my dad was living. She called the man. She called the man and she tell the man everything when we tell her. The man wake, rise up out of bed, come for a big fight with me, man, you see. Come one knife, <laughs> everything. And I was like, you're not going to come and pick fight with me again. And somebody was on the phone. And Let me call her. She can't testify. The fight that was going on. <laughs> Y'all think it's like, hold on. Hello. Hey, yeah. What? What one? I'm going to One second. I'm recording a video there. May I go? May I go put one voice disguise? What did I say to my dad when me and him was out there fighting around our backyard? You say I don't want to fight you, dad. I don't want to fight you. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Okay. My dad, I don't want to hurt you. Leave me alone. Okay. You you can verify some never did want to fight with him. Leave me because you can't manage me, Dad. Leave me alone. Yeah. Leave me alone. I don't want to hurt you. I don't want to hurt you. Okay. And then when we call the police and we reach the station, another man come? Mm hmm Okay. Well, you? No one different car driver, no man 
<laughs> Thank you. And you can verify and you can verify that you've been known I've been trying to get away from this man from how long, right? Right. Okay, thank you. I mean, never did one. Come down here and pick no fight with him. I just, I just met you. You knew that I came here about my business because at the end of the day, me and you yeah. was talking, talking before. So you know, say so it was yeah. never within my intentions. Yeah, of, yeah. yeah, you know, you. Yeah. So you can verify it was never in my intentions or plan to come here to come cut with nobody because everyone knew that I was trying to get my own place, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, no, we just did attack cause me don't want nobody. I say I lie, me I tell, but me I got this guy. Nobody I gonna know your name or nothing. But how you doing? Oh, you forgot to lie. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The girlfriend took the knife and then fight after the girlfriend. How much time for come? Okay. Yeah. And oh, and when I contacted my mom, you saw the conversation, right? When I forgot yeah. into the detail, but what was the yeah. rough? What was the rough kind of conclusion of what she said? Okay. Okay. So remember, my mom that led me into this situation, not even a prayer or nothing like that, not even a piece of advice. She will come and say, I'm money me, I look, I read, I'm in the first stress I wrote, and she have her pity them for look yeah, out. Okay. Okay. Well, I've been saying you're looking somewhere to live, and she never come to say, boy, you can't go on this or on this or. Okay. She just say, you're not, she's not like, you need to go home and go home, and everybody in the park go home, and she say, you're not going up here, you're not coming back up here. Oh, what did you, you say? Oh, talk the part there, please. Make them, make, make them hear. Because I called you the time, and I said to you, oh, what? I might be, I might be. You said, everybody telling you to go, what do you think? I'm Mr. J. Said J. Edward, the only thing you want to do is find us, and that is it, and you're good to go. That is it. And what you told me that I'm not leaving. What did the policeman say? The policeman will come. The first policeman, what did he say? Well, first of all, yes. Just find a place and move on. And I said, Jay, watch it. It's a policeman that does something. Mix up here. What am I not bad, sir? And I'm a same no bad, and he chose rare, rare, rare. Family now help you, and rare, rare, rare. And I'm a say, you two are going to make it. You can't just come from England and go work with Dream UK. No, no, no. Stop my part. No, you. You're going to make it you. Just, just look a place and find. Come on. You have money to pay your rent and you say, yes, you have a place. Exactly. That was the conversation. And don't tell the police people them didn't know me. Him never, my father never did know them something. They said the police them didn't know my face and they all them something. Okay. All to the point. And all to the point where one police officer messaged me, I sent you the, I sent you the message. All to one police officer messaged me after um, in my DMs asking if everything is okay. My other, yeah, yeah. So I don't know why you guys are making it seem as if I'm out here and stranded and nobody no respect me or I have no rating to me out here because people see me and like me and respect me for what I do. Exactly. <laughs> The main, the, 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 main, the main point is, me never did come here for try to live off nobody. Exactly. Oh, and you can verify this whole time it was them the one. You, hey man, the, the, this, the girlfriend, you can verify that she was the one instructing me this whole time at the stay around my papa and all them something. That you can verify that record. You did hear, right? Right. Okay, so when I wanted to leave and the amount of times I said I wanted to leave, it was the girlfriend that was encouraging me to stay around and try to work things out with my father. That was it. And if it but she, did, did, did she want me to work on my safety comes first. Yeah, I mean, I have push up in another body, and then if it wasn't, and see, there's somebody said, Get to safety, call the police, and that's exactly what I did. You get me? Because at the end of the day, once bitten, twice shy. But that means I either for day or Jamaica. Okay. 
know where you're going, they're going to carry you and then this happens. Yeah, oh, Karen, Karen, so back and tell me which, which, which shift they're going to be on tomorrow, if anything, and they want to know all of the information and then there's something there. So, I hear everything. Okay. Up to the first police man say, him live a Spanish one and if him never depend on duty, him there help you. Okay. Sorry, my go home now. Remember, I can't early in morning? Yeah. Remember, I'm going to You say you would have go up there to, to the man shop and all them, there's something there. Okay. Because remember, say, I don't have to tell a lie. How does all of this benefit me and all of this right now? All of this is just slowing up my business. You think all of this is a good look? It's slowing up my business. And the things I'm finding out too that I don't want to disclose don't make no sense for, for, for me to be going. I would have been happy not to find And to I would have been happy to not find any of this out. You get me? But God make a final reason. God make a final reason. To me, you just you just shocking, but yeah, from a past. Yeah. And people expect me to have it together and know completely at the age of twenty-two years old have life figured out. Does that make sense? I never got off to a good start. Remember, I said, me, they kick out and make homeless at the age of... Them kicked me out and make me... They got me off to a bad start. I've been having to recover since then. So how the hell are you expecting me to have everything together at the age of 22? And have how, how much... Will you expect me to have millions? At least I'm still here trying and doing things the right way. I'm going to look nowhere. I'm going to have my things. And at the end of the day, I find it from somewhere to pay my rent. Everybody wants me to abandon my mission, like, and, and not realizing that nothing else has been the problem but them. Not you realize nothing else has been the issue but them. But come here and nothing else. Nobody else. Business I work out, them there's something they know me reaching out my place, my alright. I them was the only problem. So when I cut them off and I don't want to work, I mean why I hear not from them, they follow me because every time I bring them around in my space, disaster comes. Like you see, you see this whole life thing? And now me can't make nobody instruct me what to do when them now look out for my best interest and I pray that for a long time, you get me? I stop by I'm not like once been into twice I am not an idiot. If I say people are not pouring into me, I can't take instruction from them. And people and, and look at it this way. And look at it this way, me for take instruction from parents that step out from God. They're not under God's jurisdiction, so how the hell can I trust them to lead me the right way when I know that I'm paren with God? That doesn't make sense. My dad, like when, when I pray certain things, my parents don't even much less want to pray. And certain things that I see them do. So if me know I'm a praying man, your environment is everything. Like your, who you surround yourself with, your energy is important. If I see that people are not on the same wavelength and not have the same fear of God that I do, me and Nikki end up on the same page. Okay. There's always gonna be there's always gonna you, there's always gonna be an imbalance. You see how me can, how me and you can talk about God and there's power in our conversations because we know the authority yeah, God has. That. You get me? Yeah. Them 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 not understand them. something they say immediately. I wanna seem as if I'm a madman when I talk about my faith and knowing that if it wasn't for God, I wouldn't be here today. You get me? And when all else has failed, we can both testify that God has always shown up at the right time. I mean, you are both when bear witness to how right time has been a testament throughout this whole process. Right time, last minute, not knowing God makes a way. And all of you guys that was there trying to fight me out, yeah? You ran me right into safety. So thank you. Exactly. I tell you, so sometimes people fight the way you want. Yeah. If you be feeling like I did that now, you then be a fucking, you then stress out. Look, last week I said this week you're happy. So you go. And now, there. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me close out the video one second. That's just a rough, that's just it, what's going on. The Kian Bada fed the back and forth, and right now, <laughs> parents is. And that's over and done for me. Right now I'm settled in my house and I just want to be over and done it. That chapter's closed. And for me, I just feel like your parents are not going to serve you. Family is not just burn. It's people that keep it real. And for me, I'm about my hustling. I want to work hard now. I want to move on with life. I want to do the best that I can do. And I just don't want to sit down. I don't want to be bound by anything. If I see something that's not serving me or if you feel like I'm bad for you, distance yourself from me. But don't feel like I'm going to hold my silence just for you and stuff like that. Because at the end of the day, when I did try and stuff like that, when I did put my effort out there, you lot turned your back on me. 
and I, there's only so much I can do. So at the end of the day, I've done the reflection. I know I'm not perfect, but I'm always doing the work on myself. And I always have prayed for you guys. That's the main thing. I always have good intentions. But at the end of the day, family or not, I have to prioritize myself. So, yeah, I told you guys, every time you pinch me, I'm going to speak. So leave me alone and I'll leave you guys back alone. But for now, guys, I'm just on this journey on my own and I'm happy to do this on my own. And it's me and I've got me. You get me? I will see myself through this. I've seen myself through so much. I'm established. I'm that guy. And I put work into everything I've done. And I stand proudly with my journey. I've done the best that I can do. And it's been me seeing myself through my adult years. Me. I brought myself this far. And God. Sorry. Through God's strength. But me. Been alone on this journey. I have to make sure I'm good and prioritise myself. So if things are not good for me, I'm distance myself. You get me? But guys, I love each and every single one of you guys that have been on this journey with me. Thank you for your encouragement and your praise. And I'm telling you guys, I'm not going to disappoint. So just stick with me, support me, and let's just, yeah. I'm just trying to document. I'm trying to document. I'm trying to document, guys. I'm trying to document. We're going to get somewhere. And I'm with God and God has my back for sure. He will cover me with his feathers and on his wings I'll find refuge, okay? God's got my back. And you lots will see that. I know you guys can see that. I love you guys. Leave you guys. Just, yeah, stay blessed.